Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today we're going to talk about some of the big events for the stock market next week. So we've got some new stories to keep an eye on and also have some earnings to talk about going forward with the week ahead. So first of all, I think what the headlines will be focusing on, what the, a lot of the media outlets will be looking at is if Putin is has taken a chill pill or not. Uh, that will be the big thing and um, we'll see what happens. Um, obviously this is what is being focused on probably the most in the last few days. Uh, obviously a lot previously to that was talking about the Fed, inflation and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, obviously this is probably one of the things that everyone will be looking at going to next week. Obviously there's a lot of rumours at the moment there's potentially going to be Russia moving into Ukraine next week. We'll see what happens. One, so, something that I actually got uh, sent that was actually really interesting is this. Talking about uh, geopolitical events and how much it actually affects the stock market. Historically, geopolitical events actually don't take that much of a hit in, into the stocks or the stock market. And I think it was Steve on the Discord that sent this. So uh, shout out to him that did send this through. Um, and you can see here, I mean, you do generally look at a few of these events and some of them you do think are probably not too big events. Um, I think this is probably the biggest one that I, I, I have been in the stock market and been through, which was the uh, North Korean missile crisis. I mean, it's an event day, but I've got to say it did kind of seem like it was quite a long period of time here. But it did say that the... Uh, total drawdown of that was 1.5% uh, and it did take 14 days to bottom and 36 days to recover um, and that was a quite a deep if you're in the stock market or if you just remember at the time it was quite a bit of a, a bit of event at the time and um, I, I do have to say that it did kind of it, it was kind of weighing on the stock market not just as an event it was kind of a long period of time and I think the same would you could say the same about this sort of event. Uh, but one thing that was actually quite surprising to me is to see, obviously I wasn't I wasn't even inv uh, invested in the stock market then. In fact, I was only uh, seven, seven years old, I think, when this happened, which was the uh, US uh, terrorist attacks, which was on 9-11 um, in 2001. And you can see here the total drawdown from that was 11.6%. Um, you know, I generally think it would have been, I personally would think that, you know, something like that um, would have been even bigger of a, effect on the market um, and that took 11 days to bottom and 31 days to recover so yeah i would say those are probably the, the, one of the two big the two biggest events i would say um obviously they're all big events but the two biggest events that happen in the stock market are geo geopolitical events on the stock market and you'd look at them and think actually these sort of things don't take too much of a toll on the stock market and it's kind of a bit immune to them um so yeah, something to keep an eye out and see how they go there. Uh, but generally, um, just going off historic data, historically, it, they don't seem to be too much of an effect on the stock market. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. But that's probably the one thing to kind of keep an eye out on. And generally, like last week, the stock market in general was having a pretty decent time. The stocks until um, around about Thursday, um, Thursday lunchtime, were all doing pretty well. Uh, you know, a lot of the stocks were up, a lot of the indexes were up small caps once again putting a massive bounce in uh last week i think um my portfolio up until this point was up about um six percent or something uh same with the s p 500 and then boom um the s p 500 actually closed negative for the week uh the russell still um held on to some of the gains um but obviously wiped a lot of the gains off and uh personally for me i think i went from like being something like six percent up or whatever it was down to like only being one percent up for the week um so yeah, this did take a little bit of a sting on, on the stock market, but um, still, since the 27th of January, we're still bouncing up a little bit here. You know, a lot, There's a lot of negativity out there, a lot of negativity with stocks at the moment uh, in general, but what we are seeing is that stocks are slowly still trying to climb up, and it would have been, until that point, even a more impressive week last week. So we'll see how this week um, opens up in general. I'm still very much bullish on small caps. I think they will do very well this year. Um, S&P 500 and big tech, I'm still a bit 50-50 on that, but that's where we're at with them sort of things. Uh, but getting on to, apart from the events this week that's going to happen, if uh, see what uh, Putin does and what Russia do uh, with regards to U Ukraine, uh, there's going to be a, a big week of earnings. We start to enter now the small market cap season. So with a lot of the big tech, um, they've kind of all reported their earnings now, and we do start to move into more of the mid, mid caps and the small caps. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how, how some of these small caps react and how much they move because judging by how some of these big caps have moved in this earnings season, they've moved loads and um, they've moved more than I have seen for a very long time. So it'll be interesting to see if small caps, which is a lot easier for them to move because obviously uh, they're a lot smaller valuation, it's a lot easier for them to move. It'll be interesting to see if they keep kind of what this, these big caps have been doing 
or if they kind of just like chill and you know don't really move that much that would be the ultimate kind of curveball if we see all these big caps moving like 10 20 percent and then it gets to small caps and they move up like one percent that would be it'd be nuts but we are this this week and um next week are yeah very very big weeks um for, for the small caps and mid caps in the earning season and um, monday in particular there's not really anything that i'm really interested in um and maybe i'll check out advanced auto parts iris networks potentially um tuesday a little bit busier marriott international after close roblox roblox is really interesting um great company not the right valuation for me one but one that i do kind of keep uh keep track of um upstart this this stock had like unbelievable 2021 like it just shot up out of nowhere and what is happening now it's um actually been caught up in a lot of the pullback and had a massive pullback so it's a it was a pretty hot stock and it's kind of dying off now so this I, that would be one that i would bank on moves a bit off earnings i would say airbnb will be one that i will keep an eye on it's one that i've tracked since its ipo um i think the actual ipo um when it did when it ipo i can't remember the exact price but i believe it was like 60 dollars maybe eighty dollars at ipo that uh, i can't remember exactly but it was it was quite low down um, and then it just shot up from ipo and i thought okay one day this will come back to its ipo value it still hasn't um, so i'm waiting for that uh, but i do track it i think it's a great company i just want it a bit of a better valuation than where it's at right now so it's one that i do check out every earnings from airbnb and yeah if it kind of comes back down to the right valuation um, I will buy it. So it's one, yeah, I, I tr basically, it's like, I track it like I own it, but I don't own it because I, I want to get it at a good valuation. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Win Resorts, that's one that I've owned previously, Solar Edge. Uh, and then we'll get on to Wednesday. So Shopify is one that I own. I will be keeping an eye on Shopify. It has recently, uh, this is one of the stocks that's just been really caught up recently. I mean, look at this one, half its value within a three months, three months, four months period. Um, it's lost half its value in, in three months, which is absolutely crazy. And yeah, I think Shopify at 104 billion market cap is pretty decent. Um, I think that obviously the valuations aren't like, you know, screaming out like cheap, but it, it never has done like Shopify. Everyone always appreciates Shopify as like a fantastic company. You know, the, the amount of profit they bring in, you know, the balance sheet is pretty solid. Uh, the revenue growth is fantastic. You know, how they've expanded the platform now to like the Shopify payment side of it, the, the logistic side of it. It's just a, such a complete company. Like you look at Shopify in the next like five, 10 years, you know, it's one of those companies that you go, of course, it's going to be higher than this. Of course, it's going to be higher. And that's why everyone's kind of like, you know, bullish on it. And sometimes it does kind of, go to quite stretch valuations but it's one of those that you just look at and go it's going to do it it's going to trade at really high valuations because without doubt you know one of the highest quality growth stocks on the stock market is shopify and i think on a 50 cent drop it is kind of like you know it is a tempting one to buy and um, we'll see what happens after earnings i've got to say shopify their earnings call is like one of my favorite earnings calls to listen to like if you ever want to see a management trying to sell the stock and that even if a uh, an average quarter um you know a bit disappointing on an average quarter they <laughs> make it sound like it was one of the best quarters in the company's history they're very good at uh, selling the business on the conference calls but yeah it is a fantastic company and i think on a 50 percent dip if it was to have even more of a dip it's one to just definitely keep an eye on and it's one that i own and you know i would mind buying some more shares on and if uh, they give me a good good earnings um i'll, I'll, I'll see what happens there but yeah uh, definitely one that i'll be checking out uh, the trade desk i know a few people are interested in this one uh crocs i've seen that actually being mentioned a few times like oh check crocs out I, I, I think i have looked at it i think it is actually quite interesting but it's really strange to get it's, it's excite it's really strange to get excited over an investment into crocs like you know they're not it's not something you really get you know when you make an investment i like to get a little bit excited about what the company is doing and what they're selling and where they're going it's quite it's quite hard to get excited on crocs but yeah it's uh it seems like it's uh, doing the right things and the valuation isn't too bad from what I've seen, but I've seen a few people shouting out about that one. Um, NVIDIA, I always one to keep an eye on, but definitely over the last 12 months, that's one that's gone to a bit of a really stretch of valuation. Um, a few on here that I know a few people, um, you know, there's a few on here that I have skipped past that I know a few people have mentioned before. Um, Palantir, I know that's a really popular YouTube stock, so we'll see what happens there. Personally, for me, I've never been interested in Palantir um the valuation just absolutely crazy and also um i always like to invest in products that i understand and potentially can use just to see if i do like the product i'm not going to try that product because i think it's like um 
I can't even remember, is it like a million pound to get the product? So I'm not gonna pay a million pound for the for that product to use it. And uh, even when like researching the products, like I, I think I had a good good grip on what it was and what potentially it had, but there's still that little bit of unknown there. And to be paying up for that valuation for that, I was just like, nope, not for me. So I know it's it, it's one of those that when it comes out on uh, with, with earnings, there'll be a, probably about five billion YouTube videos on it, but you won't see one from me because it, it's not one that I really am that interested in. Um, Walmart, Fiverr, Fiverr's interesting. So Fiverr is probably top of, it is in my top three of stocks that I don't own that I'd like to own. The only thing that I, why I haven't bought Fiverr is that because it is still, it's still a little high on the valuation. Like, um, you know, you look at it, it's 318, you know, 52 Kai, but even then it, it was just stupid, stupid valuations. And even now that it's down at like $81, like the valuation is still not like, it's quite good, but it's not like cheap, cheap valuations. And that's the thing. And that's why I've still not bought Fiverr. Like the company I like, it's, it's going to be a very profitable company. The revenue growth's good. It's in an industry that I think will do very well. Um, you know, I would really like to buy Fiverr, but I just need it to come like a little bit lower. Like if it around about that 52 close, around that $60 range, that's actually not too bad. That's where I would actually be quite happy to buy it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why I've not really got across the line of Fiverr. And plus with the, what's going on at the moment is that uh, you know, with what the stock market and so many stocks selling off, like we've just mentioned there, um, is that I've been buying a lot of dips and to start a new position would take up a lot of cash. P potentially to start a new position, I'd have to sell a stock to kind of, you know, like a PayPal situation, I'd have to sell some Visa shares to kind of start that PayPal position. And same with Fiverr, it probably would be the same and it just don't work out right now. Like I compare Fiverr to like a lot of the stocks that I own and I don't think Fiverr is at the moment of these prices, better stock to own than them at the moment. And that's what I've got to kind of weigh up really. Um, like like PayPal, for example, I think PayPal at these prices is a better opportunity than Visa. So it made sense for me to make that move and sell Visa to buy PayPal. Um, but yeah, I will be checking these guys out. Um, interestingly enough, I think um, Upwork, which is a very similar company, you know, it's like the main competitor to Fiverr brought their earnings out and the earnings were pretty good. Um, and the stock dropped. So judging on that is that if Upwork do something very similar, strong earnings, it should still drop off earnings, but you know, that's obviously 50-50, it's a bit of a gamble really. So, but we'll be checking them out anyway. Um, and then you've got Roku, and um, that's interesting. Dropbox, which I own as well. And then a few more stocks here, Redfin. Um, then Friday, this is obviously the biggest day for me. <laughs> my biggest holding, my number one, is reporting earnings on Friday, which, I always get very excited for, and very nervous for, at the same time seeing what they do on earnings. Um, going into earnings, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this one. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll if it'll go up. I'm not sure if it'll go down. I, w I wouldn't like to bet on these earnings. Um, I mean, DraftKings itself. I mean, I'll, of course, I'll probably be making a video about these earnings at some point. Uh, potentially, I might not. I might not even make a video on um, Friday. Um, until quite late or potentially Saturday uh, just to talk about these DraftKings earnings. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously the thing is the stock's been absolutely killed off in like the last few months as a lot of stocks have. Um, I mean, if we just go from the, the, the September time, you know, this was $62 and yeah, all obviously growth stocks have been killed off and, and this sector has been killed off. So, I mean, the stock's down like 60% at the moment and personally for me, uh, I'm down like 40 something percent on this position. Um, and I think at the moment, like DraftKings is definitely at like really cheap valuations for sure. Um, you know, when I was buying this stock at th that this sort of price range, like I always knew DraftKings could go down in value because it is like, uh, you know, high risk, you know, high growth stock, which obviously has more high volatility. Um, and as well as that, the valuation was like pretty like average, it wasn't cheap. So I always had in my head that I thought DraftKings always has the potential to kind of go down to maybe $40, maybe high 30s. I always thought that was a possibility, but I think at the moment the DraftKings is down at like, well, I mean, it went down to $17 uh, and even now at $23. Like this for me is definitely DraftKings at well, very, very two undervalued prices. Um, so I think that has that is going to be a benefit going into into the DraftKings earnings for sure. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, with with the stock at the moment, you know, we've seen it, earnings reactions have been so strange. Like we've seen good earnings go down, we've seen bad earnings go up. So I don't know what will happen with the reactions of DraftKings earnings. But I mean, 
Obviously, this is the peak time for DraftKings. You know, we're going into the NFL season. Um, there's not many, not too, not been too many state launches, which is the only thing, so that it won't look as high growth, but it still should be pretty decent growth. I think the NFL season has been a decent season, so hopefully that kind of puts around to, um, you know, quite a lot higher volume of, you know, transactions and bets. Um, I mean, I don't know what the outcome is, will be on how successful the bets have been and everything like that but yeah i'm just looking for the, the growth story over the long term to kind of continue i mean here analysts are expecting 38 percent growth um you know potentially looking at that i think that they could come in higher than that um and i was quite surprised to see actually the next quarter they're projecting uh 39 percent on the next quarter so obviously DraftKings should come out with some guidance i was quite surprised to see 39 percent um on the next quarter i thought with uh, you still have the NFL season, obviously, you know, going into the Super Bowl playoffs. Um, and also you consider there's been the New York launch in that time. I believe Louisiana has been in that t time. There might have been someone else that I might have forgotten about. Um, so that I would thought that that would be a little bit higher than uh, 30, 39 percent. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure where this number will come out, but I'm interested in guidance and seeing if it is being that sort of range. I mean, I would potentially argue that I would expect probably around about 50% maybe, um, given on that guidance. So we'll see what these, I like getting these numbers in um, and seeing, um, comparing them after earnings of how they did. Um, obviously, current year, they're still expecting to put 100, 106% year over year growth, which is unbelievably good. Um, and next year, you know, the, at the moment, analysts have been, there's not been much talk about this, but analysts have been hiking up that next year growth up all the time now. You know, this is, um, I believe when we were at last year, I think this was some, somewhere in like the 30% range. So now that we're actually nearly touching 50, um, says a lot, you know, not that it's given any appreciation at all, appreciation to the share price at all, which is stupid. And it's one of those that makes your head hurt a little bit going, okay, so now you're expecting it to grow even faster than what you thought, but now it's even lower valuations than what you, I don't know, you know, it's one of those things, but um, yeah, obviously if it does, you know, 100% this year is unbelievable. If it does 50% next year, that's, um, that's really good. Um, you know, my, my estimates for, um, obviously here they say that their average estimate is 1.9 billion. I think DraftKings can easily get around to, which is their actual high estimate here, which is 2.1 billion. I think they could get somewhere between 2.1 billion to 2.3 billion next year. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and like I said, I won't, for me, I won't be too conscious on what the share price is doing because we've seen it previously like DraftKings has absolutely smashed earnings and you look at the guidance I mean what this year they're expected to do 1.2 billion you got to consider you know at the start of the year DraftKings guided for I think it was something like 700 700 million 800 million in revenue so you look at that here you know the from the revenue expectations at the start of the year uh, to where they're at now it's a lot higher it's a lot higher and so again it has it has no benefit on the share price but this is what i'm looking for DraftKings. i'm not really bothered about what happens in the share price in the short term long term i'm just looking for them to do more of this sort of stuff which is absolutely smash it um, and as long as this cat's carrying on smashing it um yeah i um i'll uh, i'll be happy a happy shareholder and i think it will do will do very well so um yeah those are things to keep out uh, an eye out for um obviously news events some earnings wise and obviously a little bit talk about DraftKings as well going into earnings so um hope you enjoyed it anyway guys um have a good week and uh, i'll see you on the next video